What's up guys, so we're here to show off a lot of new cards today. We're going to be showing off the new Egyptian God Slime Rank 10 Spamish deck. And I know it sounds weird, but the new Sacred Beasts are actually going to be pretty good. Uh, if you want to make it a rank 10 deck, you're going to see a lot of weird cards in here. And you control your opponent with Wave Motion Cannon if you want. There's a few troll cards in here. I'll give you guys some suggestions if you want to make it a little bit more competitive. But there's a lot of really good cards that got added into this deck. And it actually is looking to be a little bit better and potentially even meta. With Sacred Beast Awakening, all you have to do is control a Sacred Beast, because uh, it requires you to have a level 10 monster. And with that, you're able to go ahead every single turn, add back a Metal Reflex Slime that you use as material, or you can go ahead and use it as a Tribute Summon for some of your Sacred Beasts, uh, because of the effect that it will be able to uh, bring to the table, which you guys will see here very soon. So uh, Metal Reflex Slime, just pretty much at the end of the day, becomes the Egyptian God Slime, which you guys will see here. And it basically just has a bunch of stats. It's 3,000, 3,000, and it forces your opponent to attack that card. Uh, but in addition to that, every single turn, you're gonna be able to, with Sacred Beast Awakening, get free access to going for more uh, rank 10 cards. It does have a one turn turnover because you have to go for Egyptian God Slime. Then Sacred Beast Awakening lets you re-add back the card and then you get to go ahead and summon another copy of Battle Reflex Slime and then you can overlay these two and then just go ahead or you can go ahead and make the Egyptian God Slime and then kind of recycle your Metal Reflex Slime over and over. And then we're kind of trolling our opponent over here because at this point we've already like won the game super hard. Uh, but this is over 75,000 damage. So every single turn with Sacred Beast Awakening, um, we get to not only gain life points because you can see his eight life points are at 18,000. Every single time they summon a monster, it's Dogwood's effect as long as you control a Sacred Beast. You start healing up. You also get to add the Continuous Trap. And then with two, you get to negate all the effects on your opponent's uh, field that activate. And then the third effect allows you to make it so any monster sent to the opponent's graveyard is banished instead. So you basically have <laughs> a, a, a effect where it's like a defissure, they lose all their effects. So basically no effects in graveyard too, because again, everything is getting banished instead. And then on top of that, you have seven spirits gates unleashed. So you get to add one of the sacred beasts instantly with that effect. And then on top of that, um, you get to uh, once per discard a card, spell summon a fiend monster with zero attack and defense from a graveyard, which lets you instantly get your double effect of this. And then on top of that, every single turn, you get to add back a continuous spell card from your graveyard to your hand. So that actually lets you troll with wave motion cannon a little bit. Uh, how viable is this? There's probably better options. Messenger of Peace could be great because you can just simply not pay and then re-add back the card and then slam it back down again. So it can get really annoying for your opponent to add a wave motion cannon uh, or, uh, you know, I'm thinking Messenger of Peace is probably better, but there might be other options to go ahead and utilize with this, but this is what we're using right now for the troll purpose. Um, so now we're gonna go ahead and oh wait hold on this is this is this is a different archetype that's the flame noble knights today we're not covering them we're just covering the uh new phantom uh knight variant because we're again just trying to showcase off how good this is but uh, if you guys are new here uh make sure you guys subscribe to the channel turn those notifications on and I'll upload the noble knights very soon here because that's the newer archetype too uh which actually you will see it face off against uh, this archetype but we'll also showcase off uh the uh sacred beast versus the new cute archetype which we'll get to in a moment here but yeah this archetype is actually getting a lot better the first two i know it wasn't against something meta but you'll see uh over here oh this guy just rage quit over here because he just went ahead and was like i don't want to deal with it uh so you can actually do some burn damage with this deck as well i'm, I'm not sure why i saved that one um that one was kind of like unfair kappa but let me go ahead and show you guys some other great usage of other cards that you can add back to your hand over and over. Yo, if anyone remembers Eternal Duelist, not Eternal Duelist Soul, Duelist of the Roses. Mirror Wall was a permanent effect. This card was so OP in that uh, variant because it just, I think it like half their uh, monsters attack or something. It did, it did, or it did something different. I just remember that it like lasted forever and you can hide it in the back and they could never destroy it. It was so, it was so OP. But anyways, this is up against the Cleese. 
and uh, you'll see uh, the Fallen Paradise is indeed there, which is basically Potter Green. He has to attack this because, well, this card is simply just too strong. But the Seven Spirits is going to allow him to add back a can use spell every single turn. And we're seeing Graffle over here. There's a, there's a few different cards that you can mix in with this archetype because every single turn uh, that you have this effect, you can discard uh, a card. And the Dark Worlds would technically proc their effects over here. And on top of that, you guys saw the Raviel Phantasm, uh, Lord of Phantasms over here to make it so he's going to boost up the attack with 8,000 attack. And that's pretty easy, especially when the guy is paying eight every single turn anyways. Uh, so you can see the deck has a lot of potential to make something uh, just be able to have enough damage to one shot. Plus, this can make it so it can attack all your opponent's monsters, not that he needed to. But with 8,000 attack, you attack two or three monsters, it's game over for the most part. Now you guys can see the lockdown variant of this deck. A lot of people are actually playing this deck right now. Um, it's just because it's kind of maybe a flavor of the week because Sacred Beasts were really popular. Um, they weren't really ever very good, but people loved having them. I remember people just would keep them in their binders and be like, that's not for trade. But nonetheless, uh, they're a lot better now. Uh, again, just simply being able to have that ability to complete lock your opponent out. So once Sacred Beast Awakening gets affected, um, it's pretty much game over. Uh, once again, this negates all effect monsters that activate on the field. So you can't really like tribute this card or do anything. Um, even though I believe this would go off the field, but nonetheless, anything that's activating on the field, you can't use. But on top of that, um, if you have three of them, any monster sent to the graveyard is banished instead. So it's it's just a straight lockdown. Your opponent can't really do anything. And it does have that potential to give you an instant win. But uh, this one over here is going to showcase off, uh, well, you guys can already see one of the really cool cards, the Hyper Blaze, which is more so for Araya, but now the deck is getting a lot better with being able to synergize with the new Egyptian God. You have a little bit more consistency uh, with that because, okay, the Slime God over here, if it's uh, used as a tribute summon, you can use it for the, uh, you can treat it as three tributes. So it really helps out with those brick hands that you would have normally with having too many of the uh, Sacred Beasts, because they are level 10 monsters. Uh, but you can instantly just utilize it for all the tributes, so you'll be uh, pretty much good to go. So this one is going to be a mirror match, but he didn't have anything. He just has Araya, and he's gonna go ahead and just pass, disrespecting his opponent. Uh, this guy is actually playing the Dimension Fusion at Destruction, which can actually be a pretty interesting card. Now this is a kind of a long duel, but I just want to showcase off um, the potential of this deck in certain scenarios where you don't have certain cards. So he's got the Skyfire over here, and this makes it so uh, if you uh, if you face up whatever, uh, where is it, uh, leaves the field, you take no damage for the rest of the turn. So it kind of lets you stall again with some of the uh, things in the archetype. Uh, I'm not sure if I would consider it viable, but with number 35 Ravenous Tranchula, this is pretty cool because you're able to detach material and blow up all face up uh, monsters your opponent controls with attack less than or equal to this card. And this card will get up to insane amounts of attack because it gains attack and defense uh, based on the difference. And uh, once you guys saw the first duel, you guys saw him get up to 18,000 life points. At that point, the uh, rank 10, like the tarantula cards, actually become very, very powerful. In fact, if you're playing against a certain archetype, the other spider card, the rank 11, which you can actually just make by just slamming it on top of the number 35, you can make it so whenever they use a spell trap, they instantly just takes, uh, some type of uh, damage every single time to do like anything, uh, which I'll get into once we go over the deck profile. But you guys can see like this duel over here, uh, we have 42,000 attack uh, plus, is that, uh, hold on. I I'm gonna have to do the math. That might actually be over 100K uh, in damage. Uh, and if it is, then that's gonna be the title. Originally it was gonna be 75,000 plus damage over 2K. But if we can get it to 100, that'd be even better. Uh, I'll have to do the math on that one in one second. But uh, anyways, um, once again, seeing how this archetype can work against one of the newer archetypes, the Marfei. The, uh, the Mur- or Murfei? Murfei is an archetype that's just way too early on. I don't think it has the potential right now, but people are trying, you know? People want to go ahead and check out the new archetype, so he's going to go ahead and make a token pass. Like, it's a really mediocre archetype, um, so I, I think it's just not ready yet, and that's the problem. Uh, is because they just don't have any of the new support, but you can see the, the guy's trying, all right? We gotta give him some credit. Um, he's gonna go ahead and be able to pop a card, but, uh, well, it's just, it's just most of the stuff is just, uh, bounce. Uh, if you attack them, they get to, like, bounce. That's, like, how the archetype works. Again, it's just too early to, I think, even attempt the archetype, but we'll see how it plays off. So, uh, he's just gonna go ahead and come on, pass over here, and then, um, 
we've seen the Fiendish Chain activated, plus the Sacred Beast Awakening. So again, every time he summons a monster, he gets to heal up. This is where the deck gets out of control, um, when you don't get rid of this card fast, because it has way too many effects. It resets cards, like, you know, Fiendish Chain. Um, you, every single turn, you can add back Fiendish Chain. That's, hey, that's a pretty good effect. Uh, unfortunately, though, um, where is it? When, where is it? Uh... When it is destroyed, destroy this card. I need this card to get destroyed, not like, like, like sitting up on the board. Because sometimes this card will just stay up on the board, which you want it to be destroyed. You can see the blazing mirror force. Unfortunate for him. He, he was just kind of. I don't know really what his plan was. I get. I give you again mad props for trying to run the Murphy, but it's too early, mate. So we're gonna go ahead and see him go and go off. And at this point. Once you have three, it's pretty much game over, uh, because any mon you get again, you get too many effects at this point. And then once again, number thirty-five, so you're gonna be able to heal up. He's gonna go ahead and finish train it because uh, what happens is with this card is if your opponent uh, normal is supposed to summon a monster or this card is targeted for an attack, you get to actually uh, bounce this card back to the hand. Then you can special summon another Mar uh, Murphy. So that's kind of how they work. They kind of just spam the board. Uh, it's may be viable by going for Nat Beast turn one against certain decks, but for the most part, it should be like a link oriented deck, but then you lose out on all your advantage if you get like Song or something. This guy, this guy's just, he, he's straight up cyber bullying the poor Murphy player. <laughs> but uh, anyways, we're gonna go ahead and see the player just get up massive amounts of damage. I wouldn't say this one's over. He's gonna not be able to use any effects. This one, we can just side it out uh, at this point, he just, he just cyber bullied him at that point. Uh, but you guys can kind of get an idea on how the deck can play. Now, this was one of the variants that he did play, but I want to give you guys some more suggestions. Phoenix Chain was obviously a better choice, but you can definitely swap up some cards. I'll, I'll actually remove some of the cards here that I think definitely can be replaced, but there are cards for troll purposes. So, first off, we didn't get to go over this card, but Child's Play actually can stack up very fast with the Sacred Beast Awakening. Every single time your opponent summons a monster, you gain 300 life points, and then your monsters can't be destroyed by battle while you have 10,000 or more. It's pretty easy to get this effect, plus it's another card that is a continuous that can actually come back. Um, but I don't think it's necessary, honestly. With Wave Motion Cannon, yeah, you can do some burn damage, but I also would say that this deck is not needing that card. Um, the core cards that I think would be pretty decent for the deck, yeah, I even don't really like giving my opponent the option to draw. Um, Fallen Paradise, I feel like is is so good. I, I would personally run multiple copies of Fallen Paradise, even though it, once you have one, it doesn't really do anything. With the ability to go ahead and get rid of a card to recycle some of these other cards, I think it's totally A-OK. -okay. And it really helps out because these cards, while they have insane amounts of stats, your opponent will be using effects to get rid of them. It'll force your opponent to kind of get rid of Fallen Paradise before they get rid of your other card. And with this card, it really just kind of secures your games a little bit easier here. So I think that this can be some great options. I'm not a fan of card destruction because it allows my opponent to cycle through things uh, but that's my personal take on it um, and i would also recommend terraforming uh, here but i want to give a shout out to my boy zeke for hooking me up with his variant of the deck but i really want to say that this is a uh, is a really good core setup for majority of the uh decks and i also really recommend you guys to play multiple copies of dark ruler no more the reason why is because you can't really break an established board with this deck uh, as easy uh because you definitely need these effects to go through so card cards like dark ruler no more nibiru or ash blossom to prevent your opponent from going off on plays is going to be really key and i think i can really recommend it you don't really need the extra deck it's kind of a, a cheese slash win harder. This card is not bad though. I definitely think that running three copies of Egyptian God Slime with Extravagance can still be a viable option because you really don't need your extra deck here. Um, I will recommend you guys to play uh, other cards though, like Phoenix to go ahead and pop back row if there happens to be a card that you really need to get rid of for whatever reason on Gravity Bind, right? Um, it just it just really helps out against random stuff sometimes. Just you need to pop something. Uh, so that could be a great card. Or you can even run like a Twin Twisters because the cards do have banished effects uh, as well once they're in the graveyard but those are some cards i really recommend and because the deck can brick a lot magical mallet could be an okay option as well but this is like a good core setup uh again i would say dark room uh no more over nibiru uh but you can just run both at the end of the day uh the thing with nibiru is nibiru can be negated while this it's usually very difficult unless they're running song but that doesn't happen too often but i would say this is a good start uh for anyone that's interested in actually taking the deck a little bit serious and because there are cards where like with metal reflex time you can continuously use 
use it. As far as it being like viable to go ahead and uh, run three copies of it, I think you can do okay with two uh, copies of this card as well. But I would say multiple copies of Dark Ruler Normal will make the deck much better. But let me give you guys a deck profile uh, for what I would consider like more viable options here. Um, other things, uh, Fiendish Chain was a great other card, but again, it usually just gets stuck on the board versus actually going to the graveyard, which is kind of the problem. If there's any other good continuous uh, stuff, let me know. Um, I, I was thinking Messenger. Uh, a piece would actually be good because what you do is you don't pay then it goes to the graveyard and then you basically lock your opponent out of attacking every single turn if it's 1500 or more and then you go ahead let this card uh you don't pay then it goes away and then you just get to re-add it back so you, you basically can still attack and then your opponent can't attack it's a really dirty thing to do i think this is the go-to card here but anyways uh yeah with the deck profile we got three copies of Haman, three copies of raviel and then we've got the uh new uh lord of phantasms raviel and then we've got three copies of dark summoning beast three copies of dark beckoning beast and three copies of chaos summoning beast this will be in like, every single build then of course one for one for your chaos summoning beast and we got foolish because some of them do have banish effects we got reborn we got three copies of the seven spirits gates unleashed so you get to instantly add whatever card that you want or one card that lists it um i i decided to put in oops i kind of messed up the order my bad but um it's because i really i like having three copies of fallen paradise in here uh but yeah extravagance i think is excellent in the deck as well you can also run the other tarantula card um since we were talking about the extra deck here with extravagance um this card could also be pretty good because every time uh where is it uh, each time your opponent activates a spell or trap you get to inflict 600 damage to your opponent immediately after it resolves so you can kind of burn them too if you want to go ahead and utilize this card as well um but yeah dark lord no more you can play multiple copies of that terraforming again for Fallen paradise foolish because the effects and then uh, i i think messenger peak can be an okay-ish card uh, like i said it's it stalls it forces your opponent to get rid of this before this anyways and then um uh, we've got three copies of metal reflex slime you can drop this too if you want and then three copies of sacred beast awakening which you want this card this card makes the deck so much more viable it is the card that literally makes this deck eh, it's okay to like dude if i make two would you, you can summon two sacred beasts in one turn and then your opponent literally cannot Yu-Gi-Oh so it gives you that edge factor in beating your opponent before they get a chance to play for the extra deck we've got egyptian god slime at three uh, like i said it can be used as th uh, three tributes so that's great for that and then we've got the uh dragonite uh, libe we've got the gustav max we got the ravenous tarantula and then there's your bottom and crime punishment uh, you really don't need most of the extra cards but the only things that i will say are really good i mean this card can get up insane amounts of stats uh because again with this card it does way too much it literally lets you add a continuous crap and as soon as you have one, it already gives you a huge effect of permanent dogwood. Continuous, by the way. And on top of that, you can add back another continuous. It's it's just way too good. Um, but that's all you really need. Um, Etris Bane could be an also great option for the extra deck as well. But uh, yeah, that is the uh, new sacred... Uh, beast featuring the new Egyptian god slime. We're not playing any Slifer because uh, Slifer, unfortunately, like you got to play the continuous stuff. And I think it just it's too much to get consistency. I think these are just better options at the end of the day. But anyways, hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, drop a like on it. If you are new here, make sure you guys are subscribed. Turn on that bell so you don't miss out when we upload more cool stuff. Like of course, Noble Knights coming up very soon. TM. But thanks for tuning, in, guys, and I'll catch you in the next video. Have a good one. And if you guys want to send me in replays like my boy Zeke, once again, shout out to you. Feel free to send it to Asia's Replays or gmail.com. I'll catch you next video. Peace.